server team is nervous about full-scale DR testing, so they've asked us to stretch a layer two between our DC and DR sites. Is this a good idea? And I assume what we mean by they're nervous about full-scale DR testing is they don't want to get into different IP blocks that they should have over in the DR site, or presumably they would have over in the DR site, and or they just don't want to cut over completely. But they want to they want to stretch. They want to buffer. Um, is this a good idea to stretch layer two between the DC and DR sites? Gentlemen, your opinions. You ever tried to troubleshoot a spanning tree loop across two sites? So, I mean, you're, you're critiquing kind of uh, you know, stretching layer two, just broadly speaking, some of the horrible things that can happen when you extend those, those domains across that geographic area. Yeah, how big do you want your failure domain? Mm-hmm. Now, yes, if you're sir. using EVPN or something like that, where you can segment the stuff, then that's a different matter. But that I assume that that's not what's engaged here. And the problem to me is, is um, do they really have a, a proper DR, DR plan if, if they're going to stretch layer two? So how certain can they be that the DR site, if, if they've stretched layer two between the two sites, because you could get an outage at both sites simultaneously simultaneously which is the entire purpose of having a dr site so. Yeah. so i would make that a part of my test plan <clears throat> yeah you you have the technologies out there now you know um, evpn addresses this issue with multi-site stuff in some ways um you also have like cisco has otv that's you know is is what i've heard a lot of people use as a use case for migration um and in my opinion, I think that's really the only use case for stretching your layer two between DCs is temporarily in a migration event. But you really got to plan that out and make sure you know what you're doing with it. And then I think yeah. depending on your use case, um, particularly if you don't have uh, an especially high RTO to consider, um, there's still, in my opinion, nothing wrong with doing a, a cold DR site where you don't even have to worry about anything like that. Yeah, and if you're going to per perform DR tests, you mean you don't have to shut down the entire entire site. You could test some services or some applications in the other site. I mean, it doesn't have to be this big bang operation to to test your redundancy. Yeah, it, uh, I don't know. I mean, it kind of does and it kind of doesn't, uh, depending on what you're testing. Right. I mean, you don't have to test everything. Uh, you know, the the routine I have, have fallen into is it was usually application specific. Okay, today we're going to test this specific application. It wasn't we're going to throw the big red switch and watch <clears throat> everything fail over or not. It was more controlled than that, but it was replicating a you know a failure and then testing that the application worked. It, but but an application at a time as opposed to all the things. Yeah. I mean, and, and normally if you stretch layer two, I would consider that to be one site and then I would have something else be my DR. But I mean, you could argue if you're running OTV or, or VXLAN plus eVPN that it's good enough, but still your mileage might vary. So I think you just said a mouthful there, Daniel, when you said, OK, if I've stretched layer two, that's not my DR site anymore. I've just made one big DC effectively. So that, yeah. that's yeah that that that's a, a like a philosophical position to take that I think is really interesting a really good way to put it.